Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We will be kicking off this edition of the JR Now in just a few moments. We are going to play that video again. Sorry, everyone, having a little difficulty. We're going to get it started. Well, we're going to stop with the video. Where did it go? Oh my gosh, where'd my Zoom go? Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We're going to um, start the program this morning. We've got um, a great audience here this morning, and we've got a great panel. We're going to, um, Steve Metzer is our moderator today. He's one of the journal record, um, he's one of our reporters. We've also got Tava Sofsky with Oklahoma Film and Music joining us. We have Jacob Snovel who is a producer in the industry. We've got um, Trevor Rogers. Trevor is the executive director of the Film Education Institute of Oklahoma. And we've got Teresa Rose Crook. And she is the executive director of the Communities Foundation of Oklahoma. Welcome everyone. And let's get all everybody unmuted and get everything going this morning. Sorry about this. And I will hand it over to Steve to get started. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, so excited to take part in the discussion today. Oklahoma's film, uh, TV, and music industries are thriving benefiting from the natural creativity of uh, Oklahomans and the natural beauty and diversity of our state and the programs in place to encourage the arts. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start by just getting a feel for where Oklahoma stands in relation to other states when it comes to film, TV, and music production uh, and the overall state of our industry. Um, Ms. Sofsky, I thought I'd, I'd begin with you. Can we begin, uh, just uh, give us a, a briefly, briefly tell us the role of uh, the Oklahoma Film and Music Office and how it supports the state's film, TV and music industries. And then um, if you can just give an idea about what makes Oklahoma attractive to film and TV productions and uh, why Oklahoma is experiencing uh, the record high numbers of productions and um, uh, the economic impact that we're uh, achieving so far in the state. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Steve. And thank you, Megan, for that warm introduction. It's great to uh, join everyone here this morning on this beautiful day, Friday. <laughs> um, so again, I'm Tava Malloysovsky, the director of the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. We are currently a division under the Oklahoma Department of Tourism. And um, we uh, have been in existence for 40 years as a, an organized state film office. And I kind of like leading with that because it really 
sets the tone. You know, the state believes in film. Um, we, we added the music component uh, a little over a decade ago um, because like you said, Steve, just our, our, our rich musical heritage and DNA um, that's, that, that lives in the soil, the red dirt here in Oklahoma. And so um, just really uh, proud to be uh, returning home to my state after being away and having to, having to go to Hollywood to work as a, as a film professional for 20 years. Um, coming back to serve my, my home state and the people of the state has just been a big reward. Um, but knowing that we've got support, you know, from the top down. And then when you look from the bottom up, you guys, um, the people, the, the community liaisons and, um, you know, the local, the local government, the crew, the talent, um, all the support services, the vendors, all of our community partners, We've got, you know, a Cherokee Nation, uh, the first tribal film office in the in the world. Um, Cherokee Nation residing in Tulsa, the Tulsa Office of Film, Music, Arts and Culture, um, uh, based in, in the city of Tulsa under the Ch Visit Tulsa. And just so many countless um, uh, stakeholders and partners that are that have been building this industry up. So our office serves as really the um, kind of the connection center, control center, if you will, we connect all the dots. When we've got film, filmmakers coming from out of state, we point them to all of our incredible uh, uh, resources, um, our local talent, much like uh, Trevor and uh, Jacob and, and, a, and a slew of other really, really talented individuals here in the state. We're, we're pointing all them to, the, to our resources as well. That is our core goal is connecting, connecting dots. I mean, that's what we do. Connect people, connect the, connect the resources. Um, and then, you know, promoting when we've got like Jacob, we're going to hear from him about the film he just uh, produced and, and wrapped here during a pandemic. And so we're promoting those, um, those, those amazing um, assets that we've got. And then probably, and then just to kind of answer your last question about, uh, you know, why, why now? Why is Oklahoma attractive? What sets us apart? Um, well, we're centrally located. We are in the dead center of the United States. Um, we have more diverse terrain and landscapes than, um, than most other places around this country. Uh, the people really, uh, in my opinion, my very strong and humble opinion, our people are our strongest assets. Uh, and um, we're a yes state, you know, we're, we're open. Uh, why now are people, I mean, the pandemic, whether we like it or not, has, has opened some new doors of opportunity uh, with Governor Stitt, uh, you know, opening borders and businesses June 1st. We have had 22 productions uh, filming. Uh, one was a major television pilot for Disney and FX um, and, a, and a lot of other, all kind of bu different budget sizes and scopes films that have been filming um, safely um, and uh, during this pandemic since June 1st. And so we're very proud of that. I mean, it's, it's tough. Jacob's gonna probably talk about that. I mean, um, it, it's, it's tough, but that's Oklahoma. We are tough. We're resilient. And um, with these amazing resources and, you know, Trevor's uh, <clears throat> a new organization to help train up and Teresa with, uh, with what she's doing to kind of support some of this industry, this workforce growth, it's, it's really just the, the right time in Oklahoma. Great, great. Uh, so I think it, it would be a great idea for audience members who aspire uh, for careers in film or in TV to hear about some of the directions they might choose to go. Hmm. And uh, Mr. Snobble, I thought that maybe um, you might talk a little bit about options that Oklahomans might have for starting out in the industry and what it might be like for someone from, say, Oklahoma City or Tulsa or even uh, little Duncan, Oklahoma, where I'm from, uh, trying to break into the industry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, everyone I think always wants to phrase it as um, breaking into the industry. And, and I've been thinking about that phrase a, a little bit because uh, the the industry of film is truly an industry and, and nobody really says, I, I'm gonna go break into the, uh, the food service industry. They just go get a job, right? Well, that's sort of the, the, 
the idea behind making movies too. And that's why I work with directors uh, that will go make a movie. Um, it goes back to that resilience idea. I think um, there are enough uh, movies that are happening now that you can, you can get a, a little bit of training and jump into a movie and, and get a job or go make your own movie. That's, that's the way you break in um, is having content, creating an actual product um, and thinking of it in terms of uh, this is an industry with skilled workers who put, who take raw materials and create a product that's never been seen before. And that's, that's uh, kind of my new way of looking at it, I guess, because film is a manufacturing industry. And I think if we're talking in terms of the industry itself, then you go start making phone calls, get a job or go make a movie and don't wait for uh, anybody's permission, essentially. <laughs> that was amazing. We're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was it. Great job, Jacob. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I thought maybe I'd ask a couple more. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, can you talk about some of the challenges that Oklahoma faces with the current size of its crew base? Also, uh, maybe you, um, followed by Mr. Snobble, if he likes, might talk about some of the potential jobs that are available to uh, anyone, really, who might be interested in a career in the industry. Yeah, so um, first off, thanks for having me on today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think uh, that, that sizzle reel that our film office that, that Teva, you, you all have put together is, is just a wonderful snapshot of truly what's available um, in this industry. Uh, I, I think so often when people think about media creation and, and movie making, we, we think about the, the camera operator and the director and the producer without realizing that there are hundreds if not thousands of jobs um, available. Um, and, and Jacob hit it right on the head. It, it is, it's a trades industry with, with, with hundreds of people coming together to work together um, to, to create a project. So it, one of the challenges that we, we face is as a growing industry and with any group, you know, any, any new industry uh, is that we're seeing an influx of production, which is awesome, is amazing. Um, but we're, we're having to change minds on what it is to, to work in this industry. And so it, it really is a, a big recruiting effort from all parties to, to showcase what different roles are out there. It, it, you know, some people might not, what I love to sell people is um, th there's a lot of, uh, filmmaking is the ultimate team sport. And there's a lot of notion that, you know, you have kind of these Hollywood artists um, that, that, that make these movies, but so much of it are, are these, these technical positions um, and uh, even though um, even though these technical positions focus on a lot of the equipment, they too are, are artists in their own regard. And so it's not it's not something in the abstract. It's not a pipe dream by any means um, to work in this industry. It's a very attainable uh, real career, um, and uh, and it, it's just garnering enough interest for people to realize that they can chase their dreams. They don't have to go away. Um, they can work in one of the most unique industries and businesses in the world, right here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna go off script just a little bit here. Uh, I wanted to mention that um, my uh, son's best friend is in the industry. He's a production assistant. Uh, and he uh, moved off, he studied at Oklahoma State, but he moved off to Georgia for a bit and took some jobs there, but he has moved back to Oklahoma and is uh, working on the production. There's a production uh, in the works with uh, Dennis Quaid. He's uh, about the Ronald Reagan uh, story and he's taking part in that. So he saw opportunity in Oklahoma and moved back because he prefers Oklahoma to Georgia. So anyway, uh, just an aside there. Uh, Ms. Crook, I'd like to uh, move on to you if I could. You bring some unique perspective of, uh, of communities of Oklahoma. Can you explain the core mission and importance of the Communities Foundation of Oklahoma and how you're working with local training entities in the film and television industries. Maybe you can describe some examples of organizations utilizing uh, the community cares program, especially for retraining 
retraining people. You bet. Happy to. And um, also, thank you so much for allowing me to be here um, and share what, what special opportunity we have right now. Um, so Communities Foundation of Oklahoma is um, an entity that supports individuals, nonprofits, um, businesses um, in fulfilling their philanthropic and community impact goals. Um, and I should have added communities, obviously, to that list as well. So um, we have funds with um, about 42 different communities that um, are focused on, I call it, I, I refer to it as the stone soup method of community um, improvement. Um, each person individually may not be able to accomplish significant change in their community, but if they pool their resources and focus on needs in the community, um, the, the impact and the power of change um, that we've been able to help uh, communities, community leaders um, uh, develop is really been amazing. And so um, we also work with individual donors um, in accomplishing the same thing when the donor has a, a particular purpose and a mission and a vision of impact, um, we provide that assistance. Um, so with this enterprise and, and that I have, I just have to stop and say, I have learned so much in such a quick period of time. Um, I was one of those people that 90 days ago, um, was not aware of everything that, um, Tava and her group have been doing and Trevor and Jacob. And I am just absolutely as a citizen of this state, um, so honored, so appreciative and blown away, frankly. Um, so thank you all so much for what you're doing. I have met um, some incredible people, some um, incredible visioning, um, invested people in making our state really and truly the next, the next major film and, and television um, creation place in the nation, if not the world. So I'm so excited to just get to to watch in awe um, with these folks. And so um, we are working right now with um, uh, the state and the county, uh, Oklahoma County and the city of Oklahoma City in helping those entities disperse their CARES dollars for residents. Um, specifically the city of Oklahoma City, when they were setting up the parameters for their residence care um, funds, they wisely, I think, um, included retraining as a use for those CARES dollars. So, you know, obviously, first and foremost is creating housing and living stability. And so, um, keeping people in homes, keeping their utilities turned on, making sure they have food, some, some of those kinds of basic necessities. Um, but then they also said, you know, let's take this opportunity to leverage up people and where they might be. Um, let's get people who were, who lost their job or lost income because of COVID. Um, let's say they worked in a particular industry, you know, like the restaurant industry, we all know was hit incredibly hard, but there are other industries as well that have been hit really hard by COVID. So let's take some of those people that were underskilled and retrain them for open positions um, for, to help fill the, the skill gaps that we have in particular industries. So we're getting to work, I'm, I'm working with people in a number of different areas, but the, the film and music office, um, we got connected together on this effort. And um, then Tava has connected me specifically with Trevor and with John and with you know so many other people. Um, so what we're able to do is um, work with these entities that have retraining opportunities um, and unfortunately right now, because we've got the December 30th timeline on the, the spend of the CARES dollars, we're having to do this in a kind of condensed time. But again, each of these groups have quickly put together curriculums, certification programs, retraining opportunities um, to really skill up people to be able to work on films um, or work in the, these industries. Um, so what we're able to do is pay for it. Um, so we are we can offer for eligible individuals. And again, it is only unfortunately for residents of Oklahoma City, 
that have lost or lost their job or lost income because of COVID-19, we can pay for their retraining. We can get them skilled up for what um, Trevor and Jacob and Tava have talked about are um, really needed, needed positions, needed, you know, we've, we've got the jobs, we've got the work, we just need to get people prepared for it um, and launching into those new careers. So really exciting opportunity, but we do have a pretty short window that we have to get it accomplished. Uh, Ms. Ovsky, what are what are some of the common requests you hear from producers and studio executives and others in the industry? Uh, and also, why is workforce and infrastructure development so important as we try to grow uh, our state's industry? Uh, sure. So, you know, historically, um, uh, and for those of those of our audience members who don't know, our office being the state uh, film and music office, we administer um, a state incentive that Oklahoma offers to um, eligible filmmakers, there's, there's criteria, you know, mostly it's for film and television um, productions. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, it's, it's also available to, for commercials or documentary filmmakers at this time uh, per statute, but um, all eligible uh, productions can apply for a state incentive, which is a, currently a uh, 35 to 37% cash rebate. Uh, based on your in-state Oklahoma qualified expenditures. Um, there's the, the jump, the little bonus we like to always highlight, which is because um, uh, I want to also make sure we're talking a little bit about the music industry, which has been hard, hit hard. Um, but so because we believe uh, and value the music uh, from our state, we will give that bonus 2% from 35 to 37, a little uptick. If you record music in Oklahoma, or licensed music that was recorded in Oklahoma. You can get 37% cash back on all of your expenditures. So um, that program, as of uh, as of when we're uh, encroaching on uh, new year 2021, which will be 20 years of having that incentive in intact. And it's, it's evolved, uh, certainly. And there's a whole history of that on our website um, under the, the tab. Uh, on our website, okfilmmusic.org, there's an economic impact tab that we've kind of put up at the top front and center because that's that's what we're doing is economic impact. So there's a legislative history on the program there. There's uh, there's charts and, and a lot of really great information on uh, some case studies and 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 uh, highlighting all the, the economic spend and the number of jobs and, and wages that's coming into the state because of these industries. So I always kind of like to point people to uh, to that, thanks to our amazing team uh, that that uh, take, makes our website look so beautiful and 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 providing so many tools for, for people who are interested. So um, so we have historically focused so much of our energy and time in um, trying to promote the rebate, but also kind of internally sometimes um, not my favorite thing, but trying to justify and, and preserve. The program uh, keep its integrity, which it's not hard to keep the integrity of the program. It's a very well structured, well oiled program, and we get a lot of compliments, even from our friends in Georgia, um, and the other people that work around the state. But just you know, with different administration um, and legislators and things, you know, coming and going over the years, it's just it's ebbed and flowed. But um, Trevor kind of really hit hit the nail on the head. He said, you know, we're trying to change minds. And I can truly confidently say that um, really probably in the past, you know, two to three years, we have just experienced a, a major uh, mindset change uh, internally and externally, you know, internally get, getting people to, to understand. And it's really just educating. That's all it is, right? It's just educating. People don't know what they don't know. They think it's you know that they think the plane flies itself. You know, with the, it, it's just the pilot, but there's there's all these mechanics behind it, and and the passengers, and and you know all the you've got so many hundreds and hundreds of people flying this plane. Yeah, um, that that we have to acknowledge and respect. And so, um, be, your question is, uh, you know, what are what are people looking for? What are those common questions? and why is workforce uh, development so important? So 
it's it's really you know the, the first call when I when we get phone calls at our office is do you have an incentive program and we say yes <laughs> so we unpack that for them um, but truly where we are right now and uh, more than ever uh, because we've it, last year was kind of a record high we had 39 productions um, with over 30 million uh, spend in state just in 12 months um, and those numbers are like tripling <laughs> as we speak and next year looks like it's even going to be greater so um, the, 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 the message that um, I hear a lot of my colleagues from Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell to uh, the folks over at uh, Green Pasture Studio and the Prairie Surf uh, uh, Studio and the Cherokee Na Nation and Tulsa Film Office, we're all talking about this three-legged stool. It's, it's a, uh, in order for us to experience more success, the incentive leg has got to be strong and growing. Um, the other two legs of the stool is uh, workforce, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, we've got to, we've got this incredibly strong foundation of, of professionals and talent here um, in front and behind the camera. Um, but then also the, inf but we've got to keep growing that is the point of, of this uh, session today. And then the third leg is infrastructure. And that's really, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's a kind of a unique leg, I think, because it's uh, the, the companies like NGP, you know, who supplies a lot of our um, uh, camera rentals and grip electric equipment and things like that. It's, it's all the vendors and support services. It's the, uh, the new sound stages that are coming online. Um, so just, you know, read the news, go to the newsroom on our website, or just if you probably don't have to look far, you'll see a new story about new sound stages coming online in 2021. Um, and, and, it's, and then it's our community. Um, and I know that's real uh, kind of hits uh, Trevor, uh, his heart because, and his core goals, because the communities, the, those local communities and those liaisons, they know their cities and communities better than anybody, right? You know, where do I go to get a doctor? Where do I, where do I go get a plumber? And so they are the true gems um, that are really, uh, you know, allowing their communities and our state as a whole to shine. So three-legged stool model is what we're, is what we're working on. So uh, Mr. Rogers, can you, can you talk uh, to us a little bit about the Film Education Institute of Oklahoma? And um, what are your next steps as you uh, see them for developing our industry workforce here in the state? Yeah, it, it's an incredibly exciting um, endeavor that we're taking on. Um, so for the, the last four years, I've been fortunate enough to work for NGP, as Tava mentioned. And um, NGP is primarily an equipment rental house um, and very, very in tune with the needs of the industry and very connected to our crew base, producers, our film office. Uh, and it, it, we recognize that the growth was, we're seeing a, a massive amount of growth in a very short amount of time. And uh, NGP was fortunate enough to, to take that growth and say, let's do something about it. And we've got millions of dollars of equipment. And if we need people on movies, well, let's let's give them the equipment and let's show them how to use it and bring them bring them onto productions with us. Um, and so, uh, you know, spinning out of that, we've we've put on these these production workshops where students step onto a real film set for all intents and purposes, and they're trained in the positions that they would work on. Um, you know, as, as if they were working, you know, here in Oklahoma City or Hollywood or Georgia, or wherever, they're doing the jobs that they would be doing anywhere in the world. And it, the, the program has outgrown um, the, the confines of, of NGP. So we've started this, this new nonprofit where we are dedicated to utilizing all of the resources that our state has available, um, whether it's using our vendors um, and our crew base to put equipment and knowledge directly into the hands of students that are transitioning from student to professional, to working with the high schools, the career tech system and colleges and universities to strengthen and reinforce um, what they're already doing in the classroom. It, it's not necessarily reinventing the wheel, it's, it's taking and it's strategically uh, trying to, to help them in the right direction of, of what, a, what a film industry actually is. 
Um, and so that is that is our biggest endeavor is to continue to uh, be that bridge between student to professional, adding curriculum, aiding in curriculum, aiding with equipment, resources, whatever it takes um, to, to strengthen those that are currently educating our workforce um, and, and do so to the standards of what the industry is going to demand uh, over the next few years. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Snavel, uh, what kind of advice would you offer uh, to aspiring actors or to others who might wanna pursue careers behind the camera? And uh, how hard is that to get in? And, and, and then can, if you can expand just a little bit and offer some advice for people who might want to form maybe their own companies uh, to, to contribute to the industry. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a, that, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> as far as acting is concerned, it, it a lot right now uh, it's, fairly difficult to get the the roles that that you want if you're an actor because you want those big meaty roles and that takes uh you're wait you're basically waiting on a big production to come in and then you have to audition and likely these bigger productions are uh already going to have big names attached or they'll have a certain person attached so i would say if you want to be in front of the camera create a business and tell a story that puts you as the, as the main actor, uh, bring in a producer, bring in, you know, all the people around the, the team around you and, and make that happen for yourself. Cause um, you know, other than auditioning all the time and just getting used to hearing the word, no, uh, you're uh, that's about all you can do is, is try to get, you know, a thousand no's in a year that way you can get one yes and, and get in front of the camera. That's, that's basically what acting is. It's just getting used to being rejected. Um, so the, the best way to do that is to go make a, make a company. And um, so I always tell people um, when we start talking about education, um, career tech, any, anytime you're doing career tech or you're doing something like Trevor's program or uh, what they're doing at Green Pastures with the Oklahoma Film and Television Alliance, those are like specifically gets you ready to uh, to get the skills training that you need to get onto a set, but uh, you're not really going to get in control of anything until you know how to be in a business. So I encourage people who want to go into film that are looking at colleges not to go into film as their main thing uh, because that's really it's really hard to find a specific program. I got lucky going to Santa Fe, um, but uh, I encourage them to dig into the art of film making with their friends, with, with these groups that are that that you can connect with at college, but to actually get a degree in business, because I've had to learn the hard way how business works, and I'm still learning. Uh, every single day and every single time I put together a production, it's, it's really learning the business and I'm doing that so that I can tell stories and I'm helping other people tell stories, which I, that's what I love. And, but I always say that I also got wrapped up into producing uh, reluctantly. I'm the reluctant producer, but <laughs> because I want to help people tell stories, but um, you know, I'm still doing it just because out of necessity, I wanted to act and, and write and direct and, and tell the story myself. So um, you can get a real leg up by understanding the business itself. And that's, it's the simple start out is just go to, uh, you know, the, the Secretary of State website and fill out an LLC form and pay $120 and start working from there and start, you know, you can Google how to make a business from there. Um, but uh yeah, so that's a big part of it. If you want to be in control of getting into the industry, then understand that it's the business and then um, start working in that direction as this is a business. Um, and then also getting on sets, even if you wanna be in front of the camera, uh, the more behind the camera you are, the more you understand what's going on on the set. And it, it's, um, it's a lot different than acting in, in theater um, so you start to understand more of uh, 
you start, you begin to understand more of what you look like on camera and that makes you a better actor. So we kind of jumped around, sorry. <laughs> but I feel like that all of those questions that you ask kind of all lead back to, you have to, you've got to understand the business and you've got to understand that this is a business and nobody's going to give you permission to go, to go make it. So. It's like Jake, the, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think we're oh, going to yeah. go on the same trail. Go ahead, Trevor. <laughs> um, just to, to, to go off of what Jacob was saying, um, you know, there, there's so much emphasis in, in the training and education to get into this industry in, in going to film school and um, or going into some kind of media training program. And, and we're, we're fortunate to have multiple excellent institutions um, that have programs like that. Oklahoma City Community College, uh, University of Oklahoma, OSU, OSU OKC, uh, 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 Oklahoma City University. Yeah, just, just to, to, to name a few who all have specialty programs for filmmaking, but Jacob hits it right on the head that there are so many other avenues to get into this industry from an education perspective that are not directly media and content related. Um, you know, whether it's uh, a marketing or business degree, um, you know, there's, there's hundreds of jobs on, on that front. Construction, electrician, you know, um, you know, elements that might not necessarily require you going to a four-year school, mm -hmm. going to the career tech institutions, estheticians, you know, our vanities departments, understanding hair, makeup, wardrobe, so many opportunities at, at so many different levels that are, that are resources that are, you know, uh, free, if not, if not very close to being free, that students could hop in right now um, and find themselves working uh, directly in this industry because of it. it's not just film school. Yeah, can I piggyback on that, Steve? Um, so what I was, I was listening to Jacob and thinking, you know, of just all the different sort of pathways um, to get into the industry. And I started, a um, long time ago as a production assistant. And that is, uh, you know, one really fantastic place to start um, because you, like Jacob said, if you wanna be in front of the camera, if you wanna be the director, I mean, you want, to, you want one of those pilot positions, go, you know, keep that, uh, keep your eye on the prize, but you will be a better um, uh, director or actor or producer or even writer in that writer's room when you can understand the mechanics of, of what it takes, you know, in that manufacturing plant, right? Like what, you know, learning how the widgets are made um, before you um, sell it. So, so I think that the production assistant, that's, we, we call them PAs and, and they're, they're, they're the, you know, the, the gyms on the, on the sets and, and in the production office. Um, I was, um, it's, it's really a, a fantastic place to start. And uh, Trevor, what you were talking about, um, that is probably the number one thing that I love about film and television is that there is something for anybody and everybody. And here's the other cool thing, doesn't matter color, size, age, it does not matter. Um, I mean, if there's veterans that are retired and they're sitting around twiddling their thumbs and they need something cool to do, they can step in. They can drive actors around. They can, um, you could be an assistant to one of, you know, the director. And I did that for a while and, and worked as a, an assistant to a producer. Talk about learning, you know, from, from, from the inside out. Um, but I mean, I've stood on sets next to, next to directors and held their lukewarm Diet Coke because that's their, was what they got to have in order to make the movie. And somebody's got to hold the Diet Coke six feet apart. And I literally did that for commercials for a year and I learned so much. And so it doesn't really matter what um, you know, path you take, um, just, just get in there and learn. And uh, I don't wanna uh, steal the show, uh, Steve, but I would love to hear if Teresa, if you're able, whatever you can talk about, kind of, if, kind of that ground zero, because Trevor's saying, you know, you could start today and it may not cost you. Can you speak to what, your what you've been uh, working on with people like like the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy. I know there's many many others that are represented here today. Those those uh, those accelerated programs that are available right now, where people could apply if they were affected from COVID. I'd love to hear you talk about that. And talk a little bit about the uh, community cares funds that those people might benefit uh, from too. How they can. Uh, apply and get, how they get access to that so, sure um so 
as soon as we get off here, um, I am compl completing um, putting together those groups that um, have already visited with me and have solidified what their plan is. And so um, as, um, and, and I just want to back up real quick before I go down that path and say, as an outsider to the industry, I have been astonished that truly what you all are saying, that there are so many entry doors into this industry, I, I, I had no idea. Um, so if somebody is, is interested in the industry, but they're not sure if their skill set we get them into the industry, I'm going to tell them more likely than not, yes, it will. So get, so go, get in there. Um, couldn't echo more what um, Trevor and Jacob and Tava are saying. Um, but specifically to these programs, so we're putting together kind of a, a comprehensive list. Um, and I know that we're going to be adding more because, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking with ACM at UCO, um, specific studios are putting together some courses. Um, Metro Tech has already submitted their proposal of courses. So, um, and it's, it's everything from um, song writing and figuring out how to write a, a um, um, write a song or write music for a film, how to tape it, what the sound looks like. Because as you mentioned, Tava, there are a lot of people in the music industry that have lost positions. So giving them a little more training, a little specific training. And, and some of it is a 20 hour or a 30 hour course over a week. Um, so fairly intense, but, um, but that they, they've got some of the basics. They just need to pivot it carpentry. I mean, all of the different things that you're talking about. So we're putting get together that list. Um, all of this goes through an entity called the Community Cares Partners, so CCP. Um, and the website is www.okcommunitycares.org. Okay, so this we're going to once we get this kind of put together, we'll have it on that website um, of these 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 programs that um, CARES dollars can pay for. And so so how we're working this, because we do have federal and then um, local requirements, um, a person that is 18 years or older, a resident of Oklahoma City and either lost income or a job due to COVID-19 evidenced by, evidenced after March 1st, okay? Um, they can fill out an application. It's really pretty simple. It's about eight questions. Um, and when it gets to the section that asks for what, what they're looking for, what service they're looking for, you can put in other, and you can put in retraining, or if you know specifically that you're, you want to go to the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy, you can put that in. You want to go to Castle Row Studios training program. You want to go to Metro Tech, whatever it is, you can put that in there. And that application will, will be sent directly to our retraining case manager. That person then works with the training entity to ensure that the individual applying has either applied or been accepted to the program, you know, just get that back end piece. And then I write, write a check. That's it. Um, the CARES dollars can pay, will pay for the tuition piece as well as if there is equipment required to take the course. So, you know, for some, you know, let's say you're going to take the carpentry course and you've got to have a basic tool set. We will pay for the basic tool set. We'll pay for whatever equipment, books, you know, whatever is required to take that course. So um, really exciting opportunity. We're hoping that um, a lot of people will take advantage of this. We need as many people um, to be uh, telegraphing and sharing with their friends, their family, their neighbors, their children um, about this, this opportunity. After the training piece, 
then that's when Tava's group really steps in. Um, and she can talk, I think, if you want to, and we've got a little bit of time, talk a little bit about they put together kind of a list of people with skills and interest in particular areas, and then can match those with people interested in um, people interested in hiring a particular position or a particular skill set. Okay. Yeah. So we're like some of the organizations that Teresa has been. We've connected with Teresa. Um, it's sort of going full circle. So, for example, Trevor, if he's popping up. Um, you know, a two day workshop in December this year to try to get that accomplished, um, the expenditures, but also the training before 12, uh, December 30th, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work with the training entity. So uh, Film uh, Education Institute of Oklahoma, and we will, which they already do, but we would make, uh, encourage them to make sure all their students, if it's you know, 25, 50 students, that they are all um, registered in our production directory. So we've got three main directories on our website. Same goes for mu music, uh, musical talent, music businesses, the, the vendors that support film and television production, as well as the, as the crew, the filmmakers themselves. And we wanna make sure, um, and then the third directory is the locations directory if people need locations, because that's important. Um, but, uh, it's important that people do just register. You know, you don't have to have experience on a film. You can say, I was trained at NGP Workshop 101 um, in December 2020. And if whatever uh, educate, other educational credentials you've got, if you've interned in a TV station or in a grocery store, I mean, you know, if you've interned for on your your uncle's farm, I mean, any of those skill sets can cross over and look um, look attractive on your on your profile on our website. And so then, you know, I think most people know, but we just put that's where we push everybody in the producers, the production managers that are hiring. We push them to the directory We're a state organization. We're neutral when they say, who's your best, you know, camera operator I say go to the website you know look at their credentials right look at where where we don't know where you're gonna hub are you gonna hub in the north east part of the state or the southeast part of the state we we don't and we don't care we want it, all the boats to lift with this um tidal wave but but we uh we we really just like to point people to those resources um and 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 kind of just go shopping really and 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 pick what what they're what they're looking for. So yeah, it's kind of a full circle um, process. Um, as we move towards the uh, the end of our discussion, um, Mr. Snobble, I know that you've been um, heavily involved in the career tech system here in Oklahoma in the past, and and have moved on and had some unique experiences since then. But I'd like for you to just talk briefly, if you want, about uh, the technical schools and how they might contribute to feeding our workforce for the film and TV and even music industry. And then <clears throat> as he completes his thoughts, um, Mr. Rogers, if you want to throw in uh, whatever you would like to add about NGP or FEIO going forward, and then uh, Ms. Crook and Ms. Uh, Sofsky, I'll let you finish up with some thoughts about uh, where you think you'd, you'd like to see Oklahoma land in the next five years or so uh, as far as pushing our uh, entertainment industry forward. So if we can just go in that order, Mr. Snobble and then Rogers and, and, and so on. Um, yeah, so I've, I've always been a huge fan of career tech. Uh, once I started working in it, in the system, I uh, suddenly, you know, the whole world seemed to open up to me of how like uh, we could be in a position like we are right now to train an entire workforce to really create something huge in Oklahoma. Um, career tech or VOTEC, a lot of people uh, still think of it as VOTEC, is specifically training people for industry jobs. Um, and so something like uh, carpentry departments are already there. Um, right now, there's a big, there was a big push. I don't know if it's happening still right now, but there was a huge push for Oklahomans uh, to get trained for the uh, for, air, for the aerospace in, industry. Big. And so career tech 
flooded their system with enough money to train people to jump into uh, you know, airplane technology and switchboards and stuff like that. Um, and so we're starting to realize that, that they can do this uh, with film as well. And we've already got um, people that are training, that are trained to be carpenters, that are trained to be electricians, they're trained to be welders, and all of these are transferable skills into film. Um, so uh, those programs have, are, are already in place, and it um, provides uh, you know, free training a lot of times. I think somebody in the chat asked uh, what options they had at 16, and, and I'm always going to say, uh, look to career tech right away because they'll train you specifically for what you're trying to do. And they may not have, uh, you know, necessarily a film program, but more than likely they'll have a production program that at least gets you some, some, some hands on work with, um, you know, computers, editing, all that stuff. And then you kind of have to fill in what else you need from there. But, um, you know, there's also like things like the esthetician program, um, you know, hair and makeup is huge. And I wish I knew how to do more of that stuff because now I'm making genre films that, you know, that involve a whole lot of like guys getting punched in the face and, and weird monsters and things like that. And that's, that's all hair and makeup. Um, you know, um, I could be building sets or rigging up um, special effects through carpentry, through electricians uh, training, all, all the things like that. Um, so I think there's a huge opportunity to um, uh, pull in the people from those industries that already exist in the film as well. And career tech is starting to make that bridge happen for sure from uh, a lot of what I was doing at Moore Norman was uh, trying to actually get the bridge going from carpentry onto film sets. So I had a guy who was building sets uh, starting to write curriculum for people who are already carpenters um, who might be coming back to get, you know, some sort of, or, and electricians too, because they, they have to come in every year to take tests and keep their certifications up. So why not add on this film set, uh, you know, building or this film set uh, etiquette part to it so they know uh, that when those jobs come up, uh, they can jump right into it from there. Um, so, yeah, a lot of that is just thinking in terms of skills-based training. Um, that's, that's what Career Tech does, and we just happen to be the best in the nation. It's between Oklahoma and Ohio, I think, as far as skills-based training, Career Tech stuff. And uh, we were the pioneers from the very beginning with skills training. So we're, we're way ahead of the rest of the nation. And, um, yeah, so I'm a huge fan. I'll, I'll just go on and on about career tech if you let me, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what else, what else was in that question that I could answer? <laughs> uh, well, that, I think you covered it. Uh, maybe you or Mr. Rogers might, uh, answer a, a question that occurs to me. Um, if I'm a trained carpenter and I want to work on a movie set, do I have to join a union to even be considered for a job? No, no, you really um, because we're a right to work state. Um, there are union, there, there's a union that's available, but um, you know, it takes a, takes a while to be able to get into it. What I, about I think. Other, other jobs in, in production, like uh, a production assistant came up. Do you, is that something that if, a, no. if California production or a studio that's based in California wants to film in Oklahoma, do Oklahomans have to be members of the unions to, uh, to, to be part? No. Yeah, you can you can skip right past that. In fact, the, the last movie I did and this um, can also help answer another question in there um, about the pandemic response. Um, we've got we had set medics um, that kind of ran our uh, testing and, and stuff. And, and there's you know, there's no union for that. But we also were able to bring in somebody who just um, who had a health related career. And she became our COVID coordinator. Um, it's, it's, you can change, you can get into a film uh, at any point, basically, mm -hmm. any, in, in any way. Uh, what the only one that you kind of get stuck with is probably like a, a SAG acting, uh, the guild. 
there um, just because if they bring in a huge production, they want you to be a part of SAG. They, they, a lot of times you have to be SAG in order to get uh, a part on the bigger movies. Um, but a movie like the size that I've done to this year, at my size, uh, you can mix SAG and non-SAG actors. Um, production assistance, uh, this, this time around we had a, we had an 18, no, he was, he was 17 years old, 17 years old in high school. He, um, he wanted to be on set. We said, sure, come on. He worked it out with his, uh, school's guidance counselor and, uh, became one of our PAs and somebody got it in his head that he should be asking questions and taking care of everything. And, and, uh, by the end of the, of the film the last week, he wasn't able to be on set and we were missing him. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll give him, I'll hire him uh, yeah. straight away in the next movie. Um, we had a uh, really great uh, PA on my first film of the year, Agnes. Um, she contacted me through Instagram and was like, I'll do whatever, just let me come on. And so I didn't, I mean, she wasn't even gonna come on for pay. And she came on and she was incredible. And the next thing you know, she was sitting right beside our production office coordinator, uh, you know, helping her out. And on the next movie, uh, Out of Exile, I made her the production office coordinator. <laughs> and she, she was doing such a great job at that, that one of the producers said, all right, I'm going to make you a producer. So now she's a producer on the movie. Wow. That's <laughs> so, I mean, incredible. That's that was. So um, just to, just to piggyback off of that really quickly, um, and and then go into what you're talking about um, with the, with the career tech system. Um, Jacob hits it on the head. We're you know we're a right to work state, and so there's plenty of opportunities, and there's plenty of non-union films. Um, but for the union films that do come in, um, you're, you're predominantly working with a group called IATSE, um, and they are they predominantly handle uh, camera sound grip, electrician, um, uh, craft services, a, few, a bunch of departments, a bunch of the below the line positions. Um, and uh, in, in many cases, uh, if, the, if the film is a signatory, um, it, they are required to go through that roster of, of who is a union member first. But that being said, I don't want anybody, I get this question all the time of what happens if it's a union film. You'll see a, a crew call that's like looking for union, uh, union sound mixer. Well, here's the thing, being a right to work state and if you go through that roster and, and there's not one available, um, you have ample opportunity to, to go off roster and to work on a union film without being in the union. Being a production assistant, you're not, you're, you, no production assistant is a, is a member of any kind of union. Um, so your entry level position right there, um, you can get on a film set, get on a union film set without being a union member. But we've even had, you know, people who have participated in our programs, um, in our workshops, you know, get, you know, work as an electrician at a workshop or work as a grip, a camera, a, a, a camera assistant. And, uh, you know, a $7 million movie comes in that is a, is a union movie it didn't matter that this person was 18 years old and their first production was, was at one of our workshops, the production still hired them um, regardless. And in that, I'm very neutral. I'm not a member of a union, by the way. Um, we just, uh, I just know a lot of people in them and, and, and a lot of the bigger productions we work with. So um, you, you can't go wrong really either way, in my opinion. Um, but that being said, um, you know, they, they took on, you know, an 18 year old, 19 year old, um, and, and uh, gave them their days relatively quickly and gave them access um, to join that union. Um, so there's, you have so many opportunities and, if, and it's one of those things also like what happens if you're in the union, can you go work a non-union show? Can you go work some of these, these smaller movies? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there, there, it's, it, there's, you've got ample opportunities to work on both sides. And so Jacob hit the nail on the head. I just wanted to just add, add my two cents there a little bit. Um, and then furthermore, uh, just to talk about also the love affair for the career tech system. I, yes, <laughs> I, I love, I love our career. We're so, so fortunate to have an amazing career tech system. Um, that's one thing that the FEIO, um, the Film Education Institute, 
we are we are partnering with so many different career tech schools um, to, you know, Jacob mentioned that school may not have a film program, but they might have some kind of media production program or carpentry. Um, we are working with our connections and our board of directors that are within the industry to cultivate curriculum and starting this December, we will begin retraining current teachers in those programs to implement elements of film curriculum. So whether that's set construction, adding set construction to an already existing construction program, adding you know, hair and makeup for film to an already existing esthetician program, um, and set, you know, set etiquette, all of those basic things being you know, crafted and cultivated by industry professionals. And so um, I, I love what they've done at More Norman and, and Jacob just absolutely nailed it you know, we're, we're going to see that grow over the next year. That's, that's the big emphasis of our institution is to help the teachers and help the students um, take the knowledge that they already have and translate it directly to the film industry. We're so close to being able to just make that, make that, that bridge just instantly. We're, we're very, very close. Um, well, can I throw in yeah. one example, Steve? Uh, sorry, before, is, if that's okay. Are we, are we done at noon or 1215? Um, well, they didn't mention a particular time to me. Okay. <laughs> well, I just wanted to give a, a, a... Uh oh, maybe it is noon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's coming wow. back. We might want to try to finish this up quickly, but I was just going to throw in one yeah. final thought for myself. Uh, I would hope that going forward five years from now that my son's uh, friend that moved back from Georgia and others like him, they might consider that uh, they can just live in Oklahoma and make a career in this industry until they're 65 years old and never have to move. Absolutely. I, I would like yes, to hear 100%. Uh, some final thoughts from each of you, Ms. Crook and, uh, and uh, Ms. Sofsky, if she comes back about where you hope uh, we are in five years and if you think that might be a possibility. Absolutely, I think it's a possibility. And um, given, given the work that I do, what I would say my hope is, is that um, Oklahoma will have another very strong industry that helps level out our um, statewide economy. Um, and in doing so, it provides more uh, jobs that are at a higher wage for our Oklahoma residents. Currently, and you know, we all know the statistics, but we have such a high percentage of our state population that don't earn a livable wage. Um, and so adding another industry that can help elevate the entire state with more meaningful and a, a, a more livable wage job that to me is an absolute game changer for this state. And I am so excited and so proud to be, to know these people and the work that you all have been doing for 20 years, 40 years um, to get us to this point. And it, it just feels like we're just right there. It feels like we're just right at the tipping point. Um, if we can get Tava's three-legged stool stabilized, we are off and running. <laughs> <laughs> Am I back? I don't know that I'm back. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. I meant, uh, sorry, you guys you were all still said there. said something really profound and we missed it. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, so I can uh, try to try to answer your question, Steve, and I'll just quickly plug a, a perfect example of what I was going to mention about uh, what Jacob and Trevor were talking about with our incredible um I think we're number two behind Georgia. That's the statistic with uh, with career tech. Not well, anyway. Some other state. We're number one. We're number one. Oklahoma career tech. We are number one. There you go. But um, so just one example um, that we've been able to uh, sort of um, stand up is a uh, intense training course. Um, it's with Metro Tech, and Teresa's been involved with that. I know behind the scenes, but it is. Um, there's two different days for people to sign up. It's free. Um, check the metrotech.edu, I believe, website. Um, it's coming out probably today. Um, the, the dates and the time, uh, but it's motion picture and television production COVID-19 protocols. So it's a perfect example of that pivotal work opportunity. That is for if somebody wants to work 
um, in this new health and safety COVID unit on set, which is a key, key forefront department. It's got to be, and, and everybody knows that listening um, for, any, for any business. Um, but for motion picture and television, um, it's, it's, a, it's a training uh, course with professionals that have studied. Um, there's a whole new curriculum built that studied the, the union protocols, um, marrying that with CDC and, and film on set protocols. Um, so check that out. Um, we're uh, uh, proud to work together with the Metro Tech team on that particular opportunity. So if somebody is in the healthcare industry already as an RN, and I know we need those bodies in the in the brick and mortar hospitals, but we also need them on uh, sets, on on film sets, and and so forth to keep everybody safe. Um, the governor did deem the motion picture uh, in television and recording industry as essential businesses. Um, on the permanent books in, in the state. So um, I, it's, I'm very uh, thankful, grateful for that opportunity. But uh, where do we wanna see Oklahoma in five years? Was that the question <laughs> that we're wrapping up with? Um, I mean, I just kind of like what Teresa said, we're kind of at that tipping point. There's so much wind in our sails. I think if, if we can just continue messaging the importance that this is a real, they call it the movie business for a reason. It's, it's real business, business. It's, um, it's opportunity. We need those, we need those trained actors in front of the camera. Yes. And we want them to be Oklahoma grown. Um, but we also need, um, all the, uh, the skilled, uh, workers behind the scenes to, to lift that off. And, and as, as they said before, build that product. Um, so we, this is just a prime uh, opportunity to, uh, continue, leaning into this, um, asking questions, believing that this, this really can be our state's next uh, emerging industry, film and television and music. And just a big uh, shout out to those music industry professionals. M probably most everyone listening knows somebody that was affected um, directly with COVID, but probably somebody either pulling cables or going on the road with a band or, or a performer artist themselves or songwriter. Um, we, we are working hard um, in, kind of in the trenches to, to, um, to, to promote and, and help lift off different, whether it be training programs or whatnot, but we could also use your skill sets in film, uh, you know, temporarily until you can go back on the road and, and those kinds of things. You can stay home and, and work here. So just kind of a big, um, a big push for those music industry folks as well, and really any industry. Um, uh, you know, Teresa talks a lot about, um, and I'll kind of close with this, but is she talks about, you know, let, let's take a part-time babysitter to a full-time nanny. You know, let's take if there was somebody working in a restaurant as a dishwasher and maybe they've scaled back, you know, or at Cycle Bar and they've scaled back, they don't need as many instructors teaching, you know, they can cross train, they can, they can go, um, you know, th those instructors can go in front of um, the camera or those dishwashers can go uh, into craft service, which is, you know, the kind of more the food uh, department of a, of, a, of a production. So, so really, I think our, our, our end goal, uh, ongoing goal, I would say is provide more opportunity for, a, for more sustainable incomes for Oklahomans. Well, listen, um, I really appreciate you all taking the time to visit with me about uh, this today. It's an, it was an incredibly interesting conversation. Um, and I sure hope that you all succeed in building our industry. It's very important, uh, as uh, uh, Ms. Crook said, that uh, we, we diversify our economy and, and add to the opportunities that Oklahomans have. Um, so maybe we'll get to talk again about this in the future. I would hope so. Hope so. Thank yeah. you so much, Steve, and the journal record. Well, yes, we'll, thank we'll, you. Thank you all. Okay, well, thanks again. Maybe we'll see you again sometime soon. Perfect. Thank and you. I think Sarah said she was going to provide links and, and I think the recording for the panelists as well. So I would just love, love to say uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and share these uh, resources and, and thanks to all of you panelists. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Great work. Thanks thank you. Have a great weekend.